I realized this experience I had in my 20s has stayed with me my whole life and really shaped a lot of, shaped a lot of who I am and um, has also taken me still until now to fully understand. I'm not sure I ever quite will, but as I said earlier, um, I ended up being drafted and I, instead of going to the Pentagon and living in Georgetown, I ended up on a helicopter um, being sent out to a uh, outpost near the Ho Chi Minh Trail where the previous lieutenant, uh, as I remember, had been killed. And we circled this blasted hilltop and um, I, was, I was second lieutenant, I was coming in to command. and. Uh, the helicopter pilot came on and said, Lieutenant, we can't land because they, they got hit last night, so we're just going to have to hover. And you get out on the skids and you just jump off. And I had my brand new clean uniform on and um, my brand new M16 and my pack. It was all just perfect. And he said, but can you also just toss out the mailbag? So I crawled out on the skid and they're flop, 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 and it's doing like this. And there's guys just in these cutoff uniforms and just looking in a few little f cooking fires and it looked like a kind of homeless encampment. I mean, it really ended up under fire. But, so I tossed the mailbag down and they hovered. They said, go, Lieutenant, go. So I jumped off and the helicopter went like that and the prop wash knocked me off balance and I fell face forward into a, a, a little crater. And um, this guy, Sergeant Mackey, came up and said, you get the blank blank out of here, you blank blank. Our new lieutenant is coming today. And I um, said, well, that's, that's me. <laughs> so that was my introduction to my team. There's some pictures here of these 19-year-olds. I, I remember them so well. And you look at these and how young they were. I mean, so many of them had gone from being high school dropouts or being told by the judge to join the Marine Corps or go to jail or or um, just been drafted, and a lot of them had never lived anywhere but home, and eaten their mother's cooking and slept in their own bed. And here they are um, around the world, and we're all suited up with flag jackets and helmets and weapons. And I mean, the astronauts walking on the moon knew more about where they were than we knew about where we were. And um, we really, I guess our first thing we wanted to do was stay alive. And that was um, how they looked at me. Is this, is this guy going to help us get alive or is he going to get us killed? And if the answer is part two, um, they had various ways to deal with that. So I did my best to, to take care of them and to, we were almost always on our own. Unlike World War II where there's companies and battalions, we have, every now and then our, we had our whole company which was um, four platoons, but usually it was just our platoon. Um, we were first platoon of, of Alpha Company. The guys, the 20-year-olds, the 20 19-year-olds, they were out in the mud for a year, 365 days. But as an officer, I spent six months, more or less, and then was sent back to the rear because they wanted to make a place for another officer to come in and get combat experience because you had to get the combat experience. Whereas our enemy came down the Ho Chi Minh Trail 1964, 65, 66, and was there till 1975, um, their war was 10 years long, and they might have gotten one letter from home. Our war was 365 days. And so you had this calendar you marked um, of every day. It was, it, was, it was called your Freedom Bird calendar. It was a, it was a, a 707, and you filled it in until once it was all filled in, you went home. So your motive, unlike World War II, where your motive was, let's, be, you know, let's win the war, you're there till the duration, I, everybody's motive was to finish their 365 days. So we were really in the kind of thing where the individual's goal was not the same as whatever the bizarre or un, unknowable political goal was. And they often said that we didn't have 10 years or seven years, or when I was there, six years experience in Vietnam, we had one year's experience six times. 
Because every time that new officer came in or the new general came in, it was brand new. They had to start over. Um, so there was no continuity. And by then, 1969, they'd already started the peace talks. I mean, Richard Nixon had been reelected been, been on the plan that he had a secret plan to win the war. He'd been elected. And um, so that meant Henry Kissinger and the peace talks in Paris and all this political stuff. And when we got off our, when I got off the plane uh, in uh, Da Nang, there were people being withdrawn already. So we knew that the war was over or lost. And um, as it happened because of Nixon, the war went on for many more years and more Americans were killed under him than under LBJ. And so it really was this surreal kind of thing where you really did have the idea that you wanted to stay alive because the war was, we weren't going to win. What, what, it, what would winning even mean? I mean, even everybody there knew it. Uh, you didn't need an Oxford degree to figure it out. So it was, it was more like this unit of, of, of people trying to wander around and stay, stay alive. Um, there was one occasion early on, I'll just tell this one quick war story, where um, I got awakened in the middle of the night by a radio operator, Hires, um, who said that um, Da Nang was being rocketed. And I, so I got on the radio and they wanted me to, sit, to move the whole platoon across this river and try to intercept the rocketeers. And so I called the, platoon, the, the squad leaders together and said, we need to, we need to break camp. It's the middle of the night. I mean, we, have, we had listening posts and outposts out and we were, everything was surrounded by claymores and, and um, we have to go across the river. And they said, are you out of your mind, Lieutenant? We're not doing that. What do you mean? We're the Marines. He said, well, all they're doing is a few rockets at these rimps, which is rear echelon blank blanks, Americans in the rear who are sleeping in warm beds and having warm food and, and thinking they're at war. Let them have a taste of it. So I radioed in the mission as if to the, we were actually doing it and crossing the river. Um, and he said, by the way, if we had tried that, it's suicide. To, to leave your camp and go a whole platoon and cross the river. River crossings are the most dangerous things you can do, even during the day. Because you have to get across, get a rope across. It's just very, very dangerous. And at night, it's like suicide. And so we talked, and that's what we did. I called in the mission, and um, early the next morning at first light, we quietly went across the river and went to the place where we were supposed to be. Um, that was a, a microcosm of what that war was about. Um, in the meantime, I kept wondering, and it stayed with me, who are these people on the other side? Who, who's behind those muzzle flashes coming at me? Who are these Viet Cong? Who are these North Vietnamese soldiers living in the mountains? And they don't get to rotate out to China Beach to have a little r and They don't go on r and to Thailand. They don't have a be able to write their letters home to their wives and get packages of cookies. Um, who are these guys?